Hello everybody and welcome back, I'm Lincoln and today I'm going to show you how to make these horns I have on the model here. Super easy to make using the curve tool, so let's get into it. Alright, so here we have a new file open and I'm going to leave the default sphere. You know, I normally dump those out, but we can leave it this time. It actually has good topology for this, so we'll just leave it. So squeeze it down and what we'll do is we'll use the trim tool and turn off symmetry and we're just going to turn and kind of cut this around. And it really just depends on kind of what to the shape of your horn or antler you want to make. And that's pretty good right there. Now if you look at the wire, it's pretty messy and I want to flatten the corners. So let's just remesh it and turn the wire off. I want to grab the smooth tool and I'm going to move some of these up together. So I'm going to use the move. I'm going to use the clay tool. If it'll let me, there we go. Clay and smooth. All right, that's good. So we'll use the flatten. And all I'm doing is just knocking these hard edges off. You don't have to. Maybe that's what you want your horn or antler or whatever you're making to look like. That's fine. Now the cool thing about this technique is you can make a lot of horns really quick, different styles, and a lot of it is all in the using the curve tool itself. It's nice because the curve tool allows you to you know form your shape and then make a repeatable pattern of it which is really nice but you don't have to keep the pattern the same you can change the pattern which is really nice okay now that we kind of got something going on there I like uh, we'll go and remesh it again use the move tool max it out and what I'm doing here is just making it so when we stack this together that there's something filling up the gap and I'm gonna kind of do this because this will be kind of interesting and I know it's kind of getting messy in there but we'll fix that in just a second right. One more. I'll just remesh this I know that's ugly but it'd be kind of cool to have a nice effect underneath the ridges so I think we'll we'll just leave that all right so we'll remesh it now I'm going to use the smooth tool, but I'm going to turn, I'm going to have the intensity way down because I don't want to take all the sharp edges off. Just kind of knock down the ugly stuff here on the tops. And cool thing about this, like I said, is, you know, one shape, you can make a ton of different of these with just one shape, just on how you vary everything. Now I'm going to click on the home button. And if you turn on the grid, you kind of just so you kind of know where you're at in the world. All right, you don't have to have that on, it just kind of helps so I, you guys can see what's going on here. Now, the interesting thing with this is when you, whenever you use the curve tool, your curve is always going to go in line with a green arrow. So keep that in mind. If your part has been rotated or something, it's going to go in line with the green arrow. So just keep that in mind if you need to rotate it, you know, if it matters to you. So come up to the scene menu. We're going to add. Come down to the repeaters and hit curve. All right, if the line doesn't automatically come up, that's an easy fix. Just come up and turn off, turn on or turn off the gizmo. So if the gizmo is on, sometimes it'll be open when I open this up. Turn off the gizmo and your line will come in place. You need that to actually manipulate this. The gizmo only allows you to move things around. Okay, so a few things in here to understand. You can turn on spline, turn off splines. I usually have them on edit mode closed if you do close that's if you're doing a loop and it'll repeat and do a circular pattern if you like or whatever pattern you want which is cool I don't have snapping on the line you can leave on and then the count just click on it and drag and you can see there you, you have you're already getting more in there and you can stress this up and then add more in so that's good now that's because you only have one radius on. If we click the second radius, now we have a top and a bottom we can manipulate. We would, if we add more points in and start moving things, we can't do anything with it. So if you turn on the third one, now you can manipulate each one individually and you can come up with some different styles really quick. So let's do something, let's see. I wanna do something kind of extreme. So let's go. Maybe something like this, you know, kind of the big, long, arcing horn like this, antler horn, whatever. 
All right, so then you can just kind of add in until it looks right. And that's looking pretty good. And, you know, like I said, the cool thing is you can manipulate the sizes of everything, which is really cool. So you can kind of keep this longer and then you can bulk this up really harsh in the corners. So kind of, kind of liking that. That's, let's give it kind of like that size. Open it up here like that. So I have a reference I keep glancing up to that I kind of liked. So that's something pretty similar to it right there. Now it really just depends on how many of these you want in and what the shape is. Now, the cool thing is, like I said, if you, I think I mentioned it before, the count on this will go all the way up to 200. And basically you can make it completely smooth if you like. So it's essentially the tube tool. The difference is between this tool and the curve tool is if we go to the side, we're perfectly in line or fairly close to it anyway. Compared to the tube tool, it'll be all over the place unless you snap it to a box. So this is a little bit easier to use and less steps. So I don't want it that smooth. So I'll bring it down maybe something like that. Okay. Now there's a few different things you can do with this. We're going to go ahead and validate this. I'm good with it. Now, you can join the children. If you join the children, it's going to be like sculpting it. You can keep the instances where it will instance and do a different thing in the menu or uninstance. I'm just going to uninstance and click yes. Now, if you go, you'll see the menu goes from one curve and the sphere to a whole pile of them. So we're going to come up here, select them all and unselect them. Now, the cool thing is, is if I want to change some things, I can start squeezing these up a little bit and giving them a little bit more modification. You know, you can move them around. You can do whatever you want at this point. They're individual pieces, but that's a much easier way to put something together like this than it would have been before where you had to clone and drag and clone and drag. This thing is completely lined up perfectly for you. All right, I'm going to go up here and delete a few handful of these. This one I'm going to extend and we'll rotate it in line. Now the cool thing about how, doing it like this is you'll see, you know, you have a little bit of, got a little bit of extra something going on in this inside there. And this just helps fill that in. I don't want it quite that big though. I just want it long and gnarly. And, you know, like I said, it's just, you just kind of change them up however you want. All right. I mean, you can basically just finish it from there. If you want to turn this into a sculpt, you can come up to the menu and just voxel merge everything. However you want to do it, it really doesn't matter um, at this point. Now, if this feels too uniform to you or you want to bulk some of these up, you know, it makes it look a little better if these are all just a little bit different sized. Squeeze some down and squeeze make some a little bit bigger it really just depends on what you want to do and you can also you know start rotating them a little bit give them all just a little bit of movement it makes it much more realistic and less cookie cutter looking if you move them around a little and that's really about it and you completely change these up quite a bit shape them all, whatever you want to do. And that's basically it. You can come up here and select them all, throw some paint on them, and you got a nice horn. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you next time in the next video. All right, thanks. Remember, if you guys are liking these videos, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.